I think that in the embouchure, there is the too loose lip face and there's the too tight lip face. And that's created by just how much tension they're using in, in their corners and how much vertical uh, pressure they're applying between the top lip and the bottom lip. This sound, uh, this pinch sound, is very distinct. I'll play three different notes, the upper B flat, the middle F, and the low B flat with a pinched embouchure sound. Now, it's very nasal, it's very, I use the word congested, it's thin, and maybe most importantly, it's all middle overtones. You're getting none of that ring that the instrument should get. This is an easy problem to solve if you hear it. It's mostly going to be re talk once again about how they need to form their embouchure, but get them to think about holding their corners maybe in and down rather than out and tight. For the young kid, they're going to try and muscle it out with their lips and it's sort of a retraining in their mind of this isn't about the lips, it's really about the air, a little bit about the mouth cavity, and a little bit about the lips. But it's getting the air to move through and they want to find the easiest way to get the air to move through. So what I would suggest is, again, re-talking about how this embouchure is put together. We form the corners in their place where, the, where they reside on the face, uh, right where they're at, firm them up. I sometimes will use the, the idea of, you know, that time when you're smirking in class and you shouldn't smile and you're just holding those corners back from smiling out, get them to think about a moment that they shouldn't be smiling in class uh, and holding their corners in that way. Number two, getting their chin nice and flat too. A third point will be get them to think about the air blows the lips into position rather than them putting the lips into position. Now what I mean by this is they take the, the embouchures formed by getting the corners and the chin firm. They take the air in and then they blow the lips into position rather than doing something like tensing and squeezing before they begin. I think a lot of students get a misunderstanding that they have to form an embouchure or, or form the buzz before they even buzz the note. They don't need to do that. They basically need to hold the corners firm, the chin firm, and let the air and the mind do the work rather than them physically making some adjustments. Okay, So you'll work at just trying to get them to loosen this. If that is not uh, giving you much help, then look closely at their embouchure and make sure they're not compressing the lips together. I'm simply just squeezing my top lip and bottom lip together a little too much and that's what's creating that pinch sound. Think about telling them to get the aperture taller is the word that usually works really well for me with young kids is if I get them to think of the hole being taller instead of smaller and short. Okay, And that might create a, a sound that ends up doing something like that instead. There are other parts of the body that will create a pinch sound that really aren't lip related. So you could have a student who's getting a sound like that, but their embouchure looks perfect. You looked at the textbook, they look picture perfect there. So you're wondering why is this student still having problems? Well, that's happening, or, or that's probably happening because of activities that are going on behind the lips. The lips could be perfect, but they could be playing with their teeth too close together. All right, that's an easy problem to solve too. I like to think about a thumb's width apart for most students, maybe two fingers width. You judge just by looking at the size of your student but get them to think about those teeth being apart, not forced open to the point of discomfort, but relaxed and open so that the air can move past them. Another problem is the mouth cavity itself. It could have their tongue too close to the roof of their mouth all the time so that it's compressing the air there, therefore the sound's getting pinched coming out the end of the bell. Something like that. I'm using a pretty good embouchure to do that, but I'm still getting a nasally pinched sort of sound. So the solution to that is to get them to relax the tongue. It's really not a, a, a case of they need to open the, uh, the mouth up more. They just need to relax their mouth and say, ah, it's like being in the doctor's office, ah, or sitting down in a chair and going, oh, I'm tired after a hard day's work. It's just getting them to, to relax that mouth cavity. The difference that needs to be made is the pinch lip sound is on a middle F. The closed mouth sound is 
The difference is the volume, as you can hear. I'm putting the same amount of air into each of those, but one, uh, is, but they're equally getting equally pinched sounds. One is louder than the other. One is softer than the other. And just sort of deciding really quickly from your gut, okay, I think it's lips because I can see a little pinching and I'm getting a softer sound. Or, hmm, the lips look right, but the sound is nasal. You might be able to identify real quick that it's really about their mouth cavity or it's about their lips. So just kind of observe a little bit each time you hear those kinds of problems occur. A third area that can affect the sound is related to posture and or tension in the neck. Now, obviously, you've probably already seen the kid in your band who slumps a lot when they play. Just because they're slumping or because they're slumping, it generally will cause other tension problems to occur. And my experience is usually that that shows up in the neck. And then that neck tension radiates out to the jaw and that jaw radiates to the lips. And then we've got problem on top of problem. So I wanted to break these down from lip to mouth. And now I'm going to talk about throat so you can kind of troubleshoot uh, based on your players particular problems or they might have all three of these and you want to start with this one I'm going to talk about now. Getting the posture nice and straight is going to be important as we've already talked about getting uh, the, the thorax to be efficient when it breathes. Why the, the neck needs to be relaxed? Because it's a human instinct to close our throats when we communicate and students will think well I'm going to make a sound now so I go ah! and I close my throat. Now you probably hear this happening in your classroom sometimes if you have a few students. If you've got a lot of kids, it's going to be really hard to hear that. So it'll be something that you'll have to visually observe more than audibly hear. But if you're working with them in a section or individually, you'll definitely be able to hear it. Now that neck tension can actually create a closed sound. I'm going to take a breath for you now with a wheezy intake and a closed throat when I go to blow it out. See what it sounds like. Same F I've been playing. Now, as you can tell, that has a certain amount of resonance to it. It's louder than the closed mouth version and even louder still than the pinched mouth version, but it still isn't the full resonant sound that I normally get. It, it's airier, it's a little more diffuse, and you're just going to have to troubleshoot based upon what you're visually observing in the student and what you're hearing. What you want is this relaxed neck. And so I think some activities or some exercises that can get that going is don't uh, never do a breathing exercise where everybody stands up and works on relaxing. And don't ever let your kids do that without you watching them because they'll start fooling around and <gasps> closing their throats off. Be watching and observing how they take the air in because the quality of how that air is taken in is going to directly affect the quality of the sound they produce on the other side, as we all know. So some nice little breathing exercises will be good. Number two, some things that can help the throat is get the student to work with just taking a note, uh, taking a breath and playing a note without an attack at all. Obviously, this won't work with a bunch of sixth graders. You need some kids that have a little years on them to work at this. Plus, the problem of throat closure generally is something that develops over time. So probably your older sixth grader or your seventh grader are going to be having these problems show up. Get them to work with an air attack. The reason is, is that you'll be able to hear and they'll be able to feel and hear. They'll be able to feel that huffing the air at the note. They'll hear the wheeze. They'll hear the click. They'll hear the bad attack. Those are all signs that the throat's closed. Half of the solving the problem of throat closure is the student being aware it's going on. So I think if you can make them aware of it, it'll at least be something always in the back of their mind that they'll be working at.